In this video, we're going to do a blind taste test of the three iconic American light lagers. Michael hit me with a surprise that I didn't expect. If this was our beer, I was going to be offended by it. Michael and I had the idea for me to sample these three classic American light lagers. I have not personally drunk them historically, so for me this will be interesting to try them side by side. And primarily I'm going to pick a favorite, but then I'm also going to try to identify which one is which. One thing that I will say is that I have a deep amount of respect for the brewers that make these beers, who work in the factories that produce them because I know that they're iconic and known for their consistency and reliability regardless of where they're made or where you buy them across the country. So I'm gonna dive right into the first sample. It smells good, clean. A Little bit of corn character, maybe a hint of metallic on the aroma. I can't really see the color, so I can't comment on that. I will say that the skim of foam that's within the glass, pretty nice. Sometimes these American light lagers don't retain a lot of foam character. This guy actually appears to have a little bit going on, which is quite nice, uh, even in my black glass here. Super refreshing, dry, light, a little bit of corn characteristic. I'm not picking up any off flavors. I'm not getting much in the way of hop character either. There's a tiny bit of acetaldehyde, which is that apple characteristic, but it's pretty subdued for the most part. And there might be the ever so slightest note of metallic in this particular beer. I picked it up on the aroma and it's also in the flavor, but it's very, very subtle. In terms of the water profile, it's very balanced, very clean. I don't get a lot of minerality and it just tastes straightforward and tasty. Moving on to sample number two. Okay, this guy seems to have a little bit more floral hop character going on. Again, the foam skim that's on top of this beer for a light lager is very nice. It appears very creamy. Uh, and luscious in the glass, which is impressive. <laughs> okay, um, they're very similar. And this one strikes me as a lot softer and a lot maybe sweeter. This one is a bit fuller and maybe has a little bit more hop character, but I'm really having a hard time discerning between the two because they actually taste very similar. This is fun. I'm really uh, digging this. So this guy, I will say, I think has the least attractive foam skim on top. So from a presentation standpoint, this one might be lacking slightly compared to the other two. Wow, this is, this is way harder than I expected. They are all shockingly similar. If there was one outlier that I had to pick, it would probably be this one. These two have a very sweet body, corn forward, tiniest bit of hop character. This guy, to me, seems to be lacking the most, even though it's probably the cleanest and least flavorful. There are definitely no off characteristics in any of these beers that I can identify. Versus the Mexican lager sampling that we did, these guys are actually much better crafted, if I'm to be totally honest. Uh, very consistent across the board and delicious. Again, my, my first impression is that I like this one the least, I think. I'm not sure though, it's so hard. If you're new here to the channel, we did a tasting similar to this with five Mexican style lagers. And I was actually able to discern substantial differences between all five. Whereas with these three, I, I'm struggling, especially with these two. This one leaves like maybe a little bit more on the palate. This one is the driest and least interesting to me. And this one has more acetaldehyde. As they're warming up, I'm starting to be able to discern big differences here. I've been hating on this one the entire time, but as they warm up and I drink more of it, I'm starting to like it more. What I will say is that 
you could give me any one of these and I would be totally fine. They're all light, easy drinking. Uh, again, this one is sticking out to me as being the sweetest. This one is kind of the most middle brow and I'm starting to like this one more and more the more that I drink it. It's becoming more expressive. I think it's a little bit drier and I think I might prefer to drink it if I was to drink an entire can of it. What are you drinking? I don't know. Again, if I had to guess, this is tough. This is by far the hardest video we've had to make for me from a sampling perspective. I'm gonna say, I think this is Bud Light. I think this is Coors Light. And I think this is Miller Light. You're right. And I like this one the most. <laughs> That's where I'm at on this guy. What an exercise. Man, I, I will tell you that as the video will show, on first blush, this one came across as the most simple, but as these warmed up and I drank them more and more and more, this one got like way too sweet. This one was kind of middle of the road and this guy got kind of drier and hoppier as we went along. But once again, what I will say is if you're pulling any of these off the shelf, it's very, very hard to discern them. Definitely over time drinking more of these particular beers, I would want this guy. Final answer, can I pour them into a glass? So yeah, before we had the sample, I had the idea of ending the video by pouring them into a glass. Wow, that looks awesome. Look at that. See now, this is exactly why using the black glass is valuable because these are like night and day. If I were to guess which one tasted drier and more palatable, I would think this one just based on color alone. But surprisingly, this guy has more hop character, it finishes drier, and as it warms up and kind of hangs out in your glass, it just gets better. And then this guy, to me, looks right in between. So yeah, if we were basing them on color alone, they kind of move like so, with Bud Light being the lightest, Coors Light being in the middle, and Middle Light actually having the most golden color of them all. But yeah, what an interesting exercise. It's interesting to me that the Bud Light is the sweetest and it happens to be the lightest appearing. They certainly all look spectacular. You know, anytime I've ever had a Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller's Light on draft, typically you don't get this nice of head retention. The foam and the skim on this beer is beautiful. So all things considered, three great beers and there you have it. Let's do one more. What? Let's do one more. I got three more beers. Three just more? Turn, just okay. turn around, real quick. Okay. As if this one, as if this wasn't hard enough. Okay. What? <laughs> you guys know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Michael's got this new habit in these videos of popping these surprises on me, so. What am I even doing? Am I picking a favorite? Sure. Okay, picking a favorite from the three that you guys can see. I don't know what they are. Okay. See, I'm getting a little more coy about this because in the last round, what I said, I wound up changing my mind. So I'm letting them off gas a little bit letting my thoughts marinate before I share. These two are the most pungent. This one's not super aromatic. Is this fresh air? <laughs> this is our beer. Uh, Citra hops, super light lager, low calorie. This might be Miller Lite based on what I just tasted, but this is so robust that I'm not sure if my palate's skewed, but 
It tasted like it might be Miller Lite. I'm not sure what it is, but it's fine. It's not super pungent or anything like that. This tastes awesome. Way richer, hoppier, fruitier, and drinkable than any of the macro lagers that we just tried. And then this guy here, I, I, I don't know what this beer is, but I can tell you that I don't like it. Bush Light. Bush Light. What is this? Natty Light. Okay. <laughs> so, wow, okay, this is, that's interesting. The Natty Light was fine. This beer really stood out to me as bright, characterful, and aromatic. Like, shockingly so against these guys. Kind of had a dryness about it. It wasn't as sweet as the Coors Light or Bud Light, and I actually thought maybe Michael tried to pull a fast one, and this was just Miller Light thrown into the tasting panel. So, okay, that was a hard one once again. No disrespect to Bush Light. Once again, we don't know how these beers were handled, but objectively, this particular can was, was off. All right, guys, wow. For me, that was an incredible challenge, and I think the takeaway for me is First impressions aren't everything. Take a second to enjoy a beer, let it open up in your glass, and your experience may change. And here at Treehouse, we often say that we craft beers to be delicious all the way through the glass, and a little bit of that ideal bore itself out as part of this tasting panel. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Certainly, we have a ton of archive content on the channel, and we have a ton of content planned. So if you're not a subscriber, we encourage you to do so, and please leave your thoughts below. Thanks for watching.